Welcome, dear brothers and sisters, dear friends, to the Sabbath School Department Studio of the General Conference. With the help of the Lord, we have our new Sabbath School lesson for this week. And uh, this is uh, again, or a continuation of the subject about the mission of our Lord Jesus Christ. And uh, we are going to talk about His intercessory prayer. We are together with our dear sister Raquel. Welcome, Raquel, and we wish to begin our study with a silent prayer, inviting the presence of the Lord among us. Join us, please. Amen. <clears throat> Let's have a short overview of uh, the structure of our lesson, Jesus' intercessory prayer, <clears throat> protection, and joy. Introduction testimony is uh, very nice, and in this lesson we have a very um, significant Bible texts, a very important Bible texts, and that's why we have the questions also charged with many other questions. And don't be confused with that. You don't need to have all of them if you don't need, and you can also add more questions to it if you need. So the Sabbath School lesson is a very flexible tool and uh, the reason of that is so that everybody can uh, take as much as possible from the texts and from the testimonies. The first and the title, Prayer for the Father to be Glorified, <coughs> is the introduction to the mission of Christ as general and we have already studied that in the previous lessons but here is a little reminder uh, for us. Then we have prayer for the disciples and uh, we're going to see that since this lesson is talking about the prayer of Jesus, there are different prayers that Jesus made for his disciples, for his followers, for the world and uh, we're going to see the difference between these prayers and what that means. And uh, perhaps it's not so clear if you just read the questions and uh, the Bible verses, but uh, I think uh, with the help of the Lord, we can uh, uh, pull out the, the major concept and the differences and the common things between these prayers and uh, what is actually the intercessor service of Jesus Christ through prayer. And this is this lesson uh, is talking what this lesson is talking about. <clears throat> then we have that in the title: Prayer for Unity and Protection. And this is question number five. Then we have another in the title, prayer for joy and protection. And this is another prayer. To whom was that prayer directed? We're going to see. And the last question is inter, uh, also inside of this uh, under title, <coughs> continue to pray. And this is actually uh, um, asked for his disciples. Is the prayer also intercessory a prayer for us? Uh, it's very important that we actually cover uh, the most of the time the last uh, three questions which are related to, to the different prayers of Christ. The rest of the lesson is uh, introduction, is uh, a kind of uh, a reminding us, uh, repeating uh, some topics that have been uh, mentioned in previous lessons. But these issues about the prayer, it's a very uplifting um, uh, topic. And with the help of the Lord, this will be very beneficial if we take really time about it and see what really what is Jesus praying about. <clears throat> We're going to see now, with the help of the Lord, uh, and analyze every single question. <clears throat> and um, um, please uh, pay attention to it. And uh, of course, you can uh, extend that also in your classes. Uh, according to the needs of the local church. Let's see now the, for the first question. The first question says, as the hour of his uh, passion near it, um, what earnest prayer did Jesus address to his Father? Uh, what are we talking about here? Now we have prayers for the people, prayers to the Father, and um, let's see what did the Lord say here. Okay, I think it's very important as teachers from the Sabbath School uh, define the concept of prayer. Uh, prayer is a communication act, is a um, process because it's an interchange of thoughts, uh, it's an interiorization 
uh, from the internal ideas, feelings, emotions, impressions toward God. And, and God also answered to us. Uh, so what we find here is that communication, this act of connecting um, humans with God uh, is one of the most precious gifts that we have as human beings. Uh, salvation is about everything, but the way how to cherish and to take care of this uh, permanent and progressive connection with God is given by prayer. And now uh, we will see how Jesus used this tool in order not only uh, to express himself, how he feel, but also um, he introduced in this prayer everyone that he especially wanted to present in front of his father. So prayer is, as we have said, an act of communication towards somebody that in this case is God and that we consider the highest and sublime authority. And in this moment is a communication, is a connection. And, and this is what we need to develop in our practical Christian experience. And now, when we focus in our lesson, we will see that Jesus was in his um, more difficult hour. And exactly in his dark uh, valley of suffering, he used the most important tool that he was used um, during all his life and ministry. And this is to address himself, to elevate his thoughts, to express his words to God, to his Father. Only this specific act is an act of release or liberation because he knew that nobody else was able to understand him, even less his mission. But he was sure that his Father was attentive to his um, uh, thoughts and that he knew uh, what kind of mission, what kind of purpose um, he was in process to fulfill. So uh, beside that, this first question also emphasize the main sections of this prayer, introductory prayer, because we are in the first section of John 17. So what we find here is the reverence, the solemnity, the worship um, uh, circumstances and ambientation, attitude that Jesus had and says, and lifted up his eyes to heaven and say, Father. So this loving connection is something that we find all the way through the life of Jesus in his communication with the Father. And this let us come to the conclusion how um, important the prayer was for him. So he communicated to his Father previous a very solemn and reverent introduction um, the reason of his prayer. And it's very short and to the point. The hour is come. So this is very important. We need to have very clear ideas. The prayer is a therapeutic um, element in our life. Help us to organize our ideas, to focus in what is the most important thing. So Jesus um, announced to the Father, now came the moment that the plan of salvation will come into fulfillment. So we are in the precedence of this fulfillment. And then he added elements that confirm how this hour is come. So he asked and requested an intervention of the Father in this specific time because he had fulfilled all the conditions, all the requirements 
in order to glorify his father by obedience, uh, by faithfulness, by uh, exemplary life, and through the lifting of the law of God and the love of his father. So in this process of the context, we see a clear purpose of prayer and content of it. Thank you very much, Raquel. Very interesting. It's when I read these Bible verses, it looks like uh, our Lord Jesus is sending his report to the Father. Yeah. And it's almost like sending an email uh, to the office and saying, okay, you have given me the work and now I have fulfilled it. I finished the, the job. And uh, that means how much, um, uh, what kind of uh, earnestness uh, he put into the prayer, the words that you um, express immediately, actually, they are, uh, for Jesus Christ, they are like going through directly to the Father. Everything that we say, everything that we think is a direct communication with the Father. And it's interesting that uh, here it's obviously also in the testimony says that uh, this Bible verse indicate that there have been a contract, a working contract. And uh, um, the earnestness prayer with his father, he claimed that he had fulfilled the conditions which made it obligatory upon the father to fulfill his part in the contract made in heaven. It's incredible. Uh, when we read that, how important is the plan of salvation and how, um, how serious the whole thing was. And uh, I think we can learn from that and also to understand that Jesus was communicating by uh, prayer uh, with uh, the Father all the time. Also, we can uh, enlarge this uh, answer here with uh, how did Jesus really fulfill the duties Raquel just mentioned by obedience, by but he also demonstrated a perfect uh, character. Uh, he became a perfect example for us as humans here on earth, as many things could be said about his questions. But we can we can go to the second question and it says, according to Jesus' words, uh, what is the way to obtain eternal life? Are we deeply interested in such a knowledge? Uh, what can we answer on this question, Sir Raquel? In this next section of the prayer, uh, Jesus introduced the reason of his coming on this earth. Uh, and that was uh, to extend the hand of salvation to humanity, to facilitate the access to salvation to let humanity know who really God is. And that is love and mercy and forgiveness and readiness to help. And, and Jesus explained in his prayer, um, I have done that. And, 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 and are people that recognize you, that accept this truth, that are willing to follow um, this um, inspirational and, and wonderful truth that is in you as God through me manifested. So what we find here is something very interesting. Jesus was in person among humanity and he was completely human, but he represented divinity, represented heaven, and facilitate the way for human beings to achieve these high uh, expectations that God had originally for humanity. So he mentioned this specific purpose and give uh, a, a clear report that um, are people that uh, accepted this truth that you have entrusted to me and they keep your word. So what we find here is that Jesus was not only to fulfill the manifestation of his father, also needed to teach, to instruct, and to help humanity to keep the word of God, to, to understand in a 
practical way how to insert uh, the truth in the daily life. So that is something that we need to understand clearly. Also, when we share our experience with God with others, uh, it's not only the act of communicating as such, this is extremely important, but it's also the second section is to help them, to educate him, them, to keep the word, to interiorize, to accept it, and to implement it. So these three main um, uh, uh, points in the process of adding, associating other people in this process of communication with that, with God, is mentioned exactly in this second question. And these three points also are key elements to understand how we are supposed to work toward the well-being of others in the plan of salvation. Thank you very much. Uh, <coughs> To how to obtain eternal life. We obtain eternal life if we know the Father and we know the Son. Knowledge is a very important uh, topic, but this knowledge actually here is presented in a very specific way. If we read the second testimony, here says, this is the knowledge which is obtained by searching the Word of God. And this uh, this treasury may be found by every soul who will give all to obtain it. So this is not just the knowledge that I would like to show that in the screen. It is not just the knowledge that um, uh, theoretical knowledge of reading and memorizing the scriptures, but this is a knowledge presented in the parable and uh, this require to give up everything you have, which means this is a knowledge that we obtain in order to praxis, in order to uh, fulfill the will of God in our lives, in order to reflect Christ in our life. It's a practical knowledge of reflection, practical knowledge of following up, of living the truth, uh, the, or as in John chapter 1 says, the words become flesh the word has to become flesh in us as well so this kind of knowledge is what the lord expect in us and if we have it we will have jesus christ in our hearts and we will be in jesus christ in his church and we will uh, inherit into then the eternal life let's see the question number three did jesus fulfill his mission so that the disciples could know where he came from and how do we know that his teachings uh, was so clear and his followers could uh, fully believe that he is the heavenly father that has sent their master so what can we say about these two questions here and um, once that jesus fulfilled his mission that's obvious but uh, do the disciples understood that do we understand today that Jesus really fulfilled his missions and what we can do so that we really understand that he is the Messiah sent by the Father? The secret of this um, process of communication um, is very clear presented in John 17, 7 and 8. And if we uh, divide it in different sections, the two Bible texts, we will find out um, one of the main um, elements that decided the transition from what we know, what other people will know about God. So the first thing that we find is that, for I have given unto them what you have given to me. So this is extremely important. In order to transfer successfully the message, the truth, uh, the Christian experience to other people, we need to have one. We need to have first this connection and this personal experience with God in order to be empowered by the Holy Spirit to transfer this same experience. 
And the Lord said, Now they have known that all things what whatsoever thou hast given me are of thee. So first we need to find our personal connection with God. Then we transfer this knowledge and this experience to others. Through the observation that others have upon our own life and experiences is a confirmation that the transferring information is true indeed. And then these people become also communicators, educators for this same truth. So we find here a connection for every single step of the plan of salvation, summarized in these two Bible texts. So the way how to give the message is not only a verbal or oral communication. It's part of it, but it's not all. We need to be um, efficient and successful the power of the Holy Spirit, because we as human beings, we are not able to achieve any good without the presence of God in our lives. So what we find here is that Jesus explained very clearly that they understood because I give to them what you give it to me. So the, the element that regulate conversion um, completely renovation of a spiritual life is God in you and me. And this element is transferable theoretically to other people because we communicate our experience. Jesus was the personification of the truth. So what he preached was exactly what he was living. And everything that he did was a sermon for all the above mentioned elements. So was no contradiction whatsoever and was a completely complementation of the truth between the message of heaven, he as human on this earth, a representative of God's Father, toward the facilitation of human beings to be part of this wonderful connection with heaven. Thank you very much, Raquel. It's interesting the uh, illustration that uh, Jesus used here in his prayer. He says, by giving you, or giving them the word I receive it from you, they understood that I'm coming out from you. And this is something that uh, we need to understand, and that is something that we need to repeat in our experience. We need to give away what God has given to us, and that is the way how we can prove that we come out of Jesus Christ. And furthermore, in his prayer, actually, he uh, simplified this idea and he repeats this idea. And actually, he, he gives some more evidences and conditions we need to fulfill in order that the world understand that he sent us, that we are from him, that we are coming out from the Father the way as he also come out of him. And this is how we become actually sons and daughters of and uh, partakers of the divine nature and so many other attributes that uh, are related to very same experience. <clears throat> but let's see now, let's stop on question number four. As the high priest once prayed for its people, for whom did Jesus pray in this solemn hour? And we're going to see this, uh, this is a very special prayer and in a very special time just before the crucifixion takes place and what kind of prayer did he did to for whom did he pray and what can we learn from this prayer we can find here um, a clear um, separation between those that accept jesus christ and those that didn't so was almost near to the end of the plan of salvation related with the ministry of Jesus on this earth. And then Jesus expressed clearly to his father that 
is not of the world, not, not all the world. So he presented in front of them the ones that you give it to me. So the ones that accept the truth, that accept Jesus as a savior, that accept that God Father sent him, that he is his representative. And, and we find something that is one of the higher level of love, and is the sharing of the love toward humanity from the deity. Because say, and all mine are thine, and thine are mine, and I am glorified in them. So, Jesus loved deeply the ones that are willing to accept the truth as it is in God. And the Father have exactly the same purpose and the same objective toward the salvation of humanity. But unfortunately, we see here the world and Jesus said, I don't pray for the world because the majority will not accept. And also in his lifetime on earth was exactly like that. Only a minority uh, was willing um, to follow, to live, and to implement it in life. And that is very important because when we, with the power of the Holy Spirit, we are faithful to God and we follow His instructions, is a glorification of Him. Because this proof around the world that good overcome evil, that the power of God can transform human beings. And we can become partakers of the divine nature even if or originally we have a sinful nature. So when we are willing to surrender completely to God, is a proof of the power of God in humans. And that salvation is possible by His power. And the transformation is a way to glorify God in front of all the universe. So. Jesus tried that also the disciples understood that, that they had the privilege to be with Jesus, but Jesus will ascend to heaven and they needed to continue this work and follow exactly the same pattern of communication. They needed to be connected with God in order to connect other people also with heaven and all of us follow the example of Jesus to achieve salvation by His power and grace. Thank you very much, uh, Raquel. Very interesting. This is actually one of the, of the first very important questions in this lesson. And here in the questions of the uh, point number four, we have actually a very interesting question related to the Bible verse. The, the Bible verse says, I pray for them, I pray not for the world. But the questions indicate another prayer that Jesus did on the cross, and there he prayed for the world. He prayed actually for those who crucified him. So how can we understand this apparent uh, contradiction? I wish, to, I wish that we see the, the text is here. <clears throat> so it is important to understand that the prayer that he did on the cross for the sinners, uh, he mentioned there, and he says, um, Lord, forgive them, and because they don't know what they are doing. And this is a prayer for forgiveness of the sins. And we know that he died for the sins of the whole world, for the good and bad, for everybody. He gave actually a chance and grace for everyone in the world uh, to be saved. Uh, however, the prayer that he mentioned here in John 17 is not related to everybody because this is a prayer related to those who follow him. This is the prayer related to his church, prayer related to his disciples. And this is a prayer for glorification. I am glorified in them. And this is something that cannot happen in the world if they are not aware that Jesus have died for them. If, if people are not aware 
that uh, and they don't believe in Christ this glorification obviously cannot take place uh, and uh, as uh, John chapter uh, 3 verse 17 18 and 19 says those who believe they will be saved but those who does not believe they are already condemned and this is unfortunately the difference between the prayer of Christ for the world forgive them the sins because Jesus died for all of us and uh, and the other prayers that he did are, that are related to the disciples and we're going to see now a little more details in questions number five <clears throat> Having started the eternal life comes from knowing the Father and the Son. What did Jesus mean when he requested the Father keep the disciples through his name? Now it is another intercession prayer and it is uh, extremely directed to his disciples. And what did Jesus uh, want to say in this prayer here? We see here the two levels how the plan of salvation works. So we have heavenly and earthly level. And it's very clear how Jesus present that. So he is going to ascend to heaven, but he was first on earth. And, and we, uh, his followers, we are on earth. So we don't have this um, spiritual atmosphere this um, glorifier environment that is heaven but even if we are here on earth Jesus realized the conflict the controversy that humans had when they need to live here according to the principles of heaven but these values are rejected on earth and, and, and are not implemented, not even recognized or uh, interesting for anybody. So what we find here is that Jesus clarified that we here on earth, uh, we can be connected with heaven. And he facilitate that because he say, um, they will keep your name. They will remain faithful, with the exception of the son of perdition. I had the scripture might be fulfilled. Is the case of Judah. We know that. But we are going to focus on those that will remain here. And Jesus, by experience, knew how tragic and dramatic is to live the truth in a world that hates the truth. So Jesus present this petition to the Father for protection, for assistance, for special support, because this conflict will be even harder with time. So what we know here is that even if we need to live as we are in heaven, but on earth, we are not alone because all the heaven is committed to provide help, support, and assist us in any possible way to demonstrate that heaven is real, even in a world, in an environment that contradicts the principles of heaven. Thank you very much. In this uh, continuation of the prayer, actually, it's uh, obviously described the, contra the controversy with uh, the son of perdition or the, the Satan, the devil, that's trying to tempt uh, his disciples, try to destroy them, how to uh, try to destroy his work. Uh, however, here also we understand in this Bible verse something very important that the Father have given in the hands of Jesus certain persons and this uh, if we realize the disciples uh, they were not without fault all of them were with their weaknesses and human uh, sinful tendencies however they were given in the hands of the lord because they have given all their hearts uh, to jesus and uh, here it says <clears throat> while i was uh, with them in the world i kept them in thy 
name those that you give me I have kept and no one of them is lost and if you remember the case uh, with the Judah and uh, when the descriptions of the Holy Supper was uh, he says all of them I kept except one that from the beginning was not of of yours and that was uh, Judah so if we are not converted if we're not uh, dedicated to Christ, we actually uh, run the, the danger that we're not of His. Even if we are a member of His church, like Judah was, even if we are uh, apparently His disciples, uh, as the 70, for example, were, and they did even miracles and they preached the gospel. However, when the questions of the shaking came, the only the 11 of his disciples actually survived and uh, they were the ones that the father gave in the hunt of Christ and these are the true disciples all the rest of it uh, perhaps they came because they have some um, uh, material desires so they have some benefits they were looking for some material benefits like Judah was looking for benefits and uh, if there is uh, such a cases in the church, these people will not be called uh, people that the Father selected and gave in the hands of Christ. These are not the true disciples. These are false disciples. And uh, it is very uh, sad to say that, but this is uh, the indication of the Bible verse, uh, make immediate connection with the case of uh, Judah Iscariot and this is how we um, how we can read and copy this uh, um, this message the second testimony is here it says something very interesting uh, the manuscript 7 uh, <clears throat> if we draw nigh to God individually then don't you see what the result will be can't you see that we will draw nigh to one another we cannot draw nigh to God and come to the same cross without our hearts being blended together in perfect unity answering the prayer of Christ so you see that uh, uh, the personal interest and ego actually reveals immediately and if we reveal this kind of separation spirit uh, then um, obviously the Spirit of God is not in us. We are far away from that condition and uh, we are far away from these selected ones, invited ones from the Father that are in the hands of Christ. And uh, we see this message repeatedly even in Revelation, uh, the churches and that uh, the, the faithful witness, he, uh, and, and Jesus Christ before the churches, excuse me, he hold the stars in his hands and these uh, stars are symbol of the leadership of the church and, um, and later on also the message goes to the faithful witnesses and, and so on and we have Peter in that picture also we studied a few lessons ago uh, how Peter was uh, terribly tempted and he actually denied the master but uh, he was so um, we can say innocently um, attracted by the um, by the gospel that uh, the Lord prays for him and he repented and he become a powerful disciple so it's not the issue if we are weak or we are strong the issue is which um, uh, which purpose we have by accepting the gospel, which is our de inner desire by accepting the gospel and working for the church. <clears throat> so let's go, go forward to uh, question number six, because there is also something very important to be understood. What other requests did Jesus make on behalf of the disciples, knowing that no one else could give it to them? What can we answer here Raquel uh, here is again um, an extension of the same thought mm -hmm. this um, controversy this um, co conflict between good and evil um, will be a very uh, visible um, during the 
history of the people of God. Jesus himself um, was um, crucified and he died in a very um, anguish condition. So he didn't try to um, present reality in a different way, but realize that we need to change our values because maybe the sadness, the persecution, or the hatred on this earth um, can be overcome by the peace, the truth, and the joy that God can give to our hearts. And, and this is what Jesus tried to, to explain to his disciples and at the same time plea for him to the Father. So Jesus had a very sad experience on this earth. He was persecuted since birth. Um, he was rejected. He was despised in all possible ways. But he had a personal connection with the Father that satisfied his needs of love, peace, appreciation, recognition. And this is what he tried to present in this prayer in favor of his disciples. So it's clear that the future look dark related with the reaction that the world will have toward the faithfulness um, to the truth. But we can have a compensation. And this compensation depends on our um, understanding about priorities. What is the most important for us? The recognition of the world or the recognition of heaven? What is most important for us? to be accepted by others or to be accepted by God. So what we find here is that this conflict exists and will exist until the end. And Jesus was very realistic and presented this in the prayer. But it's a way to live even in this dark world with peace, joy, and satisfaction. Because this connection with God nourished the soul of Jesus, empowered him to be an example and to be willing to help and to surrender his life until the death by love. And this is what enabled a human being to be about the circumstances and to be inspired by heavenly values. And this is what justify our existence on earth through the blood of Jesus Christ. Thank you very much, Raquel. This is now again uh, a discontinuation of the prayer of Jesus. And here is more about the conditions that we need to fulfill in order to glorify the Father, in order to prove that we really come out of the Father in the same way as also Jesus come out of the Father, or that we come out of Jesus Christ. And this is the sign, the unity among the disciples, among the followers of Christ, is the proof that the same Spirit that guided Christ is in His uh, disciples. And uh, we, we can see here uh, how clear that is. I have given them thy word, and the word have they hated them because they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. So that is one of the things that we see here. Then we have, if the world hated you, you know that I hated, they hated me before and hated you. If you were in the world, the world would love his own. The separation of the world is actually a very important issue. Uh, at the same time, the Lord says he does not want to take us out of the world, but he wants to, that us to live in the world, but we be separated of the world, that we do not mingle with the corruption of the world. And Jesus Christ demonstrated himself in, during his life 
how this is supposed to be. Jesus does not went to a monastery, an isolated uh, place of meditation in the mountains far away from uh, from the people. He have uh, he carry his daily life in between the people, and he was. Uh, uh, facing uh, opposition and he was curing the sick and he was fighting against the temptation uh, and, and that's how he uh, proved actually that he is the son of God and that he overcome temptation and he live among the people and that's how we are supposed to overcome as well and demonstrate a separation or a real difference uh, between the world and the holiness of the people of God. Let's go and see them. question number seven. Continue to pray. What did he ask for the disciples? What can we uh, say about this uh, question, Raquel? We have two main sentences here that are extremely important to understand the mission that we have as human beings mm -hmm. and in the context also of the church as such. So the first that we need to understand as individual is that we are living in a world that is in open rebellion against God. So we know that. Um, and this situation produces attention and um, bring us suffering and persecution and opposition and anguish. And and we cannot change that. So we don't can control the circumstances. But we can change the way how we understand and confront the circumstances. And this is the second sentence. They are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. So Jesus needed to fight against evil every single second of his life without break um, but he remained faithful until the end and that is the proof that this victory is ours by his victory so what this means is that we need to understand which is our place why are you here why i am here if i understand what is the truth and i wish and is my firm decision to follow Jesus, then I need to know this will be a difficult thing. But why this happened is because we don't want to be part of these evil things that are going on on this world. And for this, we need to have a very clear determination, a very defined identity with God. And that was the case by Jesus. So Jesus was so clear why he was here, which was the final goal to achieve that this sustained him in the most dark uh, moments of his life. But he even went further because he saw the fruits, he saw the saved ones, he saw the wonderful victory uh, that uh, good achieve and how evil will be destroyed at last. So this is something that we need to implement it in our life. This need to be part of our ideology, our cosmology, our way of thinking what is going on around us. And we know that nothing good can be expected, only worse every single day. So the difference is that we realize we don't belong here. So this is something completely strange for us. We don't belong there. We are here to show another alternative. We are here to confirm that good exists and is possible to do good with the power of God. And if we realize that consequences, circumstances, will not influence us. Amen. And that is wonderful message, dear brothers and sisters. We have this uh, wonderful promise of our Lord that He's praying for us. And uh, I pray not that you shall take them 
out of the world but that you should keep them from the evil and that is so important brothers and sisters and that's so wonderful also let's remember that the Lord is praying for us not only to keep us from evil but to give us joy in this kind of uh, life and if we really have the Spirit of God if we really live uh, with uh, or under the blessing of God and uh, in His hands, we will have extremely joy. We will have also extremely protection. We will be protected because that's part of the prayer of Christ. And it is so important uh, uh, that we receive the Spirit of God, the Spirit of joy, just the Spirit of satisfaction, the Spirit of realization in the work of God because uh, when we have the Spirit we have the gifts of the Spirit we will be enabled and uh, not only to resist temptation but we will be enabled with the gifts of the Lord to do uh, many works uh, in favor of the, of the people of God of the favor of the church healing people with our prayers and we will be um, uh, enabled to glorify the name of the Father with different ways and this will give us a glorious time and a wonderful uh, kind of life and it's not necessary that we have positions in the church if we are really stars in the hand of Jesus Christ because the Father have given us into him or oh, we will uh, feel incredible blessings and I wish to all of you brothers and sisters that we be this uh, people elected selected given in the hands of Christ for whom the Christ is praying that we be really converted and uh, approved and one day also mm -hmm. sealed uh, with the seal of God and remain in not only in his hands but also in the eternal life may the Lord bless you and keep you and uh, we can see each other during the next week amen